We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. We bring you the word of His glory for today. Uh, today we're going to be in Exodus 20. This is going to be an extremely important uh, biblical lesson. This is God giving Moses the Ten Commandments. We're going to discuss the Ten Commandments of what God told Moses and how important the Ten Commandments is to our everyday living. We'll walk through the Ten Commandments and show you what the Lord Most High means in the Ten Commandments, how it was originally written in the Torah, <clears throat> and how God's Word never is to change. As the Scripture says over and over again, the heaven and the earth will fade away, but my Word shall never fade away. The Word of God is written in its original scrolls in the Ten Commandments. And the original scrolls in the Greek from the New Testament is God's God breathed. All doctrine is God breathed from the Lord. As 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God breathed for edification. Doctrine. The scripture of the Lord. We're going to on this Halloween Eve, 500, day, 500 years ago today, Martin Luther put the 95-page thesis statement uh, on the Catholic Church. And uh, he took it from grace to, or he took it from works to grace, but he left it quite a bit short. And we're going to show you exactly how man, through denomination, has changed God's Ten Commandments. You may be walking in a Catholic church today, you may be walking in a Lutheran church today, and you have no idea. I would say 99% of the people that call themselves Catholics or Lutherans have no idea that the Catholic church and the Lutheran church have changed the Ten Commandments. If you have the audacity to change the Ten Commandments, what else will you change? And that's where we get the, the heresies of replacement theology, that the church has replaced the nation of Israel. Paul talks about that in Romans 9, 10, and 11. He says, no, no, the God has a plan for Israel, always had a plan for Israel. You see the, the nation of Israel behind my back on um, one of our live streaming and God's plan for Israel is from Revelation 4 on. God's eye is Israel. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, will reign out of Jerusalem. Israel is prevalent. Israel is the, uh, is the apple of God's eye, and everything comes with Israel. You would think this heresy, this blasphemy of the teaching of, the, of, of denomination from man would have changed when Israel became a nation in May, in May 14, 1948. But man is stubborn in their tradition but we don't know where the traditions come from. Today we're going to discuss where the traditions come from and how man has changed through denomination and churches that people walk in today have no idea what man teaches. And we need to know the truth because God is now taking the veil and saying, hey, you know, media, uh, corruption in, in, in Wall Street, corruption in the government, corruption in, in uh, all forms of, of the um, NFL uh, sports, Movies, everything is being turned upside down in the name of the Lord this day and age. And he's taking the curtain back on truth of the church. This is the living word of God. We do not go away from that. We do not have a, a need a man-made praetorium, which is called in the Catholic doctrine, is the only ones that can interpret the scripture. No, that's not what the Lord says. Jesus says, the, the, the kingdom of heaven, the word of God, is simple as a child, and we need to receive it as a simple as a child, because it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us on all things. So with that said, let's invite the Holy Spirit to be our teacher in Exodus 20, to go ahead and explain what the Lord said in the Ten Commandments, where well, His word is truth, and His word will, will live on forever. We pray that the Holy Spirit comes from east to west to north to south, and this extraordinarily important teaching of the Torah of Moses in Exodus 20, of what the Lord says. When the Lord says it, He means it. You don't take away or add to the words of His book. He tells us at least four times in Scripture. Deuteronomy 4.2 in the Torah, Do not add to or take away the words of my book. Proverbs 36, Do not add to or take away the words of my book. And then Revelation 2, Grave Warnings. Anyone who adds to or takes away this, the words of this book I will add to the plagues of the book of Revelation. Anyone continue to add to and take away the words of this book will be removed from the book of life. Those are some serious warnings from the Lord. We are to be teachers. We are to be learners in the word of God with an open heart, not to change the word. And know your traditions. We've talked about this before. Well, it's the tradition of we've been Lutherans for 500 years since Martin Luther. Yeah, what Martin Luther tried to do was great. It started from you know, grace to works, but do a little bit more history on Martin Luther. 
Because Martin Luther just had a document that just came out within the last six months. And it, to, 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 go, to double down on the Apostle Paul, this is the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and was ordained in his greetings by Jesus Christ as an apostle of Jesus Christ and the authority given to him by Theos, meaning God in three. Martin Luther had the audacity to say in his writings, I don't believe the, I don't believe the Apostle Paul was right in Romans 9, 10, and 11. We have that evidence now. And we can see by the teachings of the Lutheran doctrine and changing of the Ten Commandments and changing to replacement theology, meaning the church has replaced Israel. Therefore, they don't look at the Torah. That's what they wanted you to do. Don't worry about what the Torah says. Don't worry about what the Old Testament says. God's, God's dealing with the church now. We are the church. We're the Lutherans or we're the Catholics. We are the church. We're the oldest. We're going we're gonna to pull that veil back and show you how man changed that. Most, Catholic, most Catholics that do their history will show you that that's not true. They changed it afterwards. Man always changes it afterwards. And we'll show you when they changed the Ten Commandments and how, when, and where they were written. Okay, so we told you that four times in the scripture, God says, do not add to or uh, uh, take away from the words of my book. Okay, so to mess with the Ten Commandments is you can't get any lower than that. And when somebody asks me questions about a particular denomination or, or a, um, it's a religion, because if you're counting on your de denomination instead of a love, it's a religion. It's not a relationship. Relationship is, is with Jesus Christ. Relationships with the heart. You read the Bible with your heart. That's why it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and then your mind. Your mind's the last part of it because it's a love relationship. And to have the audacity that man to change the word of God, especially the Ten Commandments. And we'll show you which one they changed and why did they change it. it has to do with idols. Oh, man wanted to bring in idols. We're not going to go in depth of all, all this, but you can get a really good book on the, the history of the Catholic Church and how these, uh, the, how these um, uh, uh, the traditions were changed by man. And uh, it's uh, Dave Hunt, the, the woman that rides a beast. And before anybody attacks with Dave Hunt, has, I've, read, I've read the book a couple times, and uh, Dave Hunt's white papers on this book, a white paper would be his reference checks of these books are all from within the Catholic Church. So it's not like Dave Hunt wrote a hit piece on the Catholic Church. It was all his sources were from within the church saying, no, 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 no. The church didn't believe this at this time. This Pope changed it or this particular uh, Augustine changed it on this uh, uh, a day. You go back to how the church was founded in the Catholic Church and you'll exp it'll explain why. And it'll also help you see why the church does not want you to learn the book of Revelation because they don't want the Romans to be exposed because at the time of John writing that, the Roman Empire was, it was uh, the, the leader in the world and they didn't want anything coming together as the Roman Catholic Church. And that was Constantine who brought in the official religion of the church and state to become one. And he brought in all the pagans and the apostasy to that, including many, many idols. And that's why the idol part is left out. Okay, let's get into the Word of God. We'll explain how the Lutheran denomination and the Catholic denomination changed the Ten Commandments. Again, 99% out of 100 Catholics or Lutherans probably have no idea that it's changed. Uh, simple, something as simple as the Sabbath. Why do, we, why do we go to church on Sunday? Yeah, the Christ was resurrected on, on Sunday, but Sabbath is in, in the Hebrew is always a Saturday. And the first church worshipped on Saturdays all the way up until Constantine to the year 300. It was Constantine that changed it for man. Why? Because he wanted to placate the sun gods, the, sun, the, 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 uh, the people within the Roman Empire that worshipped the sun god. So they changed it to Sunday. That's where we get the name Sunday, sun god. And there are many traditions like that that Constantine brought in the, the, the church and said this is the church, but brought in all the pagan traditions. And we won't go into all those traditions. But the point is, check the scripture. God's truth is the only truth in this world of fake news. And how they've gotten away with it all these years is because people are lazy. God is saying, I want you to know who I am. I want you to know my son, Jesus Christ. And the only way to know who I am is to get into my word. This is me. And this word never changes. The heavens and the earth will fade away, but the word of God will never change. Know my word. I have so many people that come up to me and ask me questions. And they'll take the Bible out of context. It's not their fault. 
They've been, they've been told that through their denomination. They've been told that. And I said, that's not what the Bible says. Really? That's what we've, we've always been taught that growing up through school and, and, and through this. No, you need to know the word of God through your heart. God wants to have a love relationship with you directly. And the only way to have a love relationship directly is through the word of God. The early churches didn't want you to have the word of God because they wanted to tell you what it meant and tell you what it says. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. He didn't say, come to the Pope or come to this muckety-muck and he'll explain the bread of life and the living water. And if, you, and if you do 60 Hail Marys, he may give you the bread of life and he may give you the living water. No, this is for all people. When Jesus died on the cross, the, 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 the veil was ripped in half. The earthquake, he is our high priest. According to the order of Melchizedek, we have access to him 24-7. Pick up your bat phone with your heart and seek the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. But truth starts, starts here in the word of God. And it ends here in the word of God. Do not let man fool you. They've tried to fool you in every way possible. This is Satan's holiday today. That's why we're bringing you this message. No coincidence that Martin Luther did this, his reformation on Halloween. He wanted to make a spooky point. It was about how he felt the Catholic Church was doing an evil with inside the church. And that's exactly what we've taught in the parable of the mustard seed. You can get that parable in the mustard seed on www.hisglory.tv. But Jesus gives us that parable to show us that Satan's plan was always to attack the church from within. The mustard seed and the birds coming in to nest in the branches is not a good thing. That's the evil one coming into the church and perversing it. Just like the evil one is coming into the government, coming into our media, coming into all the pillars of our life. But God is shining his light now to show you that there is only one truth and it is the living I am that I am. So let's get into the, uh, the word of the Lord in Exodus 20 and show truth in this world of fake. And if you're in a denomination, that's okay. But ask the question, why? Why do we do this? I remember when I was first learning the Bible, and I was in a particular denomination, and I didn't know any different. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for, uh, uh, I was always intrigued by Bible prophecy going through my first trial and tribulation. I was really seeking the word of the Lord. But Bible prophecy always, uh, was always there for me because I was in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, corporate world, I followed global events and I was a director of a global company. So I was always fascinated by global events and the economies and how they worked and history and how all that played. And so Bible prophecy was really important. So I remember sitting in this denomination and they were going to do the, the, the book of Revelation. I thought, wow, this is going to be great. I want to learn more about the book of Revelation. This is very intriguing about the end days and how these pieces are coming together. And I remember they, they basically went through the, you know, Jesus Christ's seven letters, to the seven churches. And they summed up the fourth, the fourth uh, day as, well, we know how it ends, and it ends well. And I thought, what? You missed the whole, what about the rest of it? And it's because they had an allegory. I didn't learn, I didn't know until I started to keep digging and digging and digging. If the church has replaced Israel, then the rest of the, the book of Revelation is not important. And this particular denomination believes that we're in a literal millennial reign of Jesus Christ, so everything's an allegory. Oh my goodness, as Chuck Smith famously said, if we're in a literal allegory of the reign of Jesus Christ today, look around. Is it getting better? No, it's getting worse, exactly the way the Bible said it would be. And as Chuck Smith said, if we're in a literal allegorical reign of, of uh, Jesus Christ today, Satan's chain is too long because he's out of the pit. He's, ro he's roaming the earth. Satan in the book of Revelation is in the pit. And that's where he will be forever until he is taken to the white throne judgment. But right now it's not happening. The world is melting down at record times because the true Bible, the true literal infallible word of God is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And that's where the Lord is coming out and changing the church. There's a wake up call with this great reformation. Yes, there's a reformation. There's no coincidence that today is the 500th year of the reformation. There's a better reformation coming to the world. As we speak, it's about ready to happen. And that reformation is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit and getting the truth of the word of the Lord. Denominations are coming down and the literal infallible word of God is going to flood the world. 
so that the world will know the one and only truth through the Son, Jesus Christ, and exactly how the Old Testament fits into the New Testament to create His perfect Word. And you never add to or take away. This book is flawless. This, this book is infallible. We don't trust man because we will show you every time in history man changed it. Why they change it? For their own greed, for their own power, for their own authority. Augustine was the first starting in the 300s. You ask yourself, all these things started to change when Romans took over the, Romans took over the church in the 300th century. They, the, the, the early church was not doing these things. And they weren't calling themselves denominations. That's when they started to split off. And then all of a sudden, you've had all kinds of denominations split off in the Catholic Church. You had Luther, Martin Luther, you had Aquinas, you had Calvin. All of them split off to create their own man-made doctrine. We don't need a man. We, we have the living God and the Word of God, and this is the only truth in the world. We have to stay strong in the Word of God. He is giving it access to everyone across the globe, exactly the way Jesus said in the end days. Preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every creature. And through technology, that is allowed to happen. Everyone has access to a Bible, either through the Internet or through various different sources. And today, we are reaching you literally in every single country of the world through His glory. And it's all about His glory. It's not about a denomination because man is fallible. We are talking about infallible, the only one, the living Christ who died for our sins, past, present, and future. And that's who we praise. And it's all for His glory. And His word is truth. And this truth is the only thing that can set you free in this world of fake. So let's expose the fake because God is exposing the fake everywhere. Let's get into the word of God. Praise His name. And Elohim spoke of these words saying, I am the Jehovah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I am the one and only. I am the one that brought you out of Pharaoh's household. I am the one that came against the ten false gods and killed the ten plagues. Ten is always a number of commandment or judgment. These are his commandments that he's giving us. And we see the judgments that he had against the false idols and the false gods of Pharaoh that we taught. Judgment, commandment, and it's all about the condition of heart. What do we do? do? We got ten. Ten is the number of judgment and commandment. Are we going to be obedient to his word, or are we going to be disobedient? Disobedient comes judgment. Obedient becomes love, and it will go well with us. That's why he gives us commandments. And these ten, hang your hat on them. Don't change them. Don't add to them. Don't do anything to them, but love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's why number one is so important. You shall have no other God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Verse 3, Exodus 20. You shall have no other gods before me, period. I am the one God. Where is Baal today? Where is Moloch today? Where is Ashtoreth today? Where is Eshestar today? Where is Dagon today? Again, over and over, and Satan changes the names of the false gods and idols and replaces them with a new one through the new centuries. But they fade away. They're gone. There's only one God. His name is Elohim. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was through the line of David that he gave his only begotten son. That is Jesus Christ. Praise his name. The truth will set you free. You shall not make yourself a carved image. This is where it goes horribly bad for the Lutherans and the Catholics. They changed the number two. Couldn't even get to at least three or four to be able to make the change. Why were you going to change the graven images? Hmm. Is there a certain person that they worship inside one of those particular denominations that shouldn't be worshipped? Let's see what the Lord says in His truth. You shall not have any carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. That means even a saint. Anything in heaven other than the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I don't, you don't worship angels, you don't worship my saints, you don't worship mothers, you don't worship any other than the Trinity of the Most High, which is the word Elohim. Grammatically in the Hebrew means three. Uh, in the heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, meaning the pit. There is no other gods. You worship one, no idols, no, no, no worshiping anybody else. So you have to ask yourself, does my denomination bring in idols? Why did two major denominations change God's word at number two? 
you know, I'll let you figure that out for yourself. We see that uh, uh, one particular puts Mary as a deity, uh, Mary being uh, under the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Most, most, most uh, Catholics don't even know this either, that the word immaculately conceived under Roman Catholic doctrine means on their, that, uh, from their perspective that Mary was born without sin. She was born without father or mother, DNA, without a blood. That is blasphemy. That is absolute blasphemy. And that didn't change until the 8th or 9th century. The early Catholics didn't believe that. Same with the ridiculous thing that Peter was the Pope. That didn't change until the 9th or 10th century. They're changing things after the fact for man's purpose and man's game for power and money and greed and idol. God does not. He's warning it in the second commandment. We look at the, the Catholic and the Lutheran uh, Ten Commandments. We'll go through them. Uh, and then we'll go to the true Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God from the Catholics and Lutherans. At least they got that one right. Shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. What happened to the carved image and having idols above the earth, on the earth or below the earth? Both of them skip that. Uh-oh, that's a problem right there. Uh, remember to, uh, to keep the, the, the holy, uh, holy day of the Sabbath. They, they changed that. It was the Roman Catholic Church that changed worship from Saturday to Sunday to appease what? The sun god. Hmm. And that's where we get Christmas, too. Christmas came not on December 25th. Jesus was never born on December 25th. We know that through uh, um, uh, science, and we know that through the weather conditions of Israel. Jonathan Kahn is probably the closest to it. I believe he's right. He believes that Jesus was born on the 10th of Nisan because God is always precise when he does things. The 10th of Nisan was the only day, was the day four days prior to the Passover, the Passover lamb, that you got the perfect lamb, the perfect lamb. And the only perfect lamb was the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And then uh, again, Christmas was not that. They used Christmas to unite the sun gods that, that Constantine brought in. He brought in all these pagan rituals. He brought in all these pagan holidays. He said, okay, the, 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 the Christianity is now the official doctrine of the, of the Roman Catholics or the Roman, Roman government and is now the church, came Catholic later. So they brought in these pagan holidays and to placate the sun worshipers, they made it December 25th because December 21st was the winter solstice. And they believed that the sun god died on that day because that was the shortest day of the year. So you go check history why they did it. So we, 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 we celebrate Christmas December 25th as Christ's birthday and it wasn't his birthday. It was to placate the sun gods. Oh my goodness. Know the word of the Lord. You shall not kill. Uh, honor your father and mother. You should not uh, commit adultery. You should not steal. You, you should not bear fault witness, well, false witness. And here they combine two of them together, and it's about covetousness. And that's pretty fascinating that the two that they combine together are all about coveting something of the world. They're coveting the idol by hiding the idol. You shall not cover your, covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not cover your neighbor's goods. That's not what the Lord says. That, that's man changed that. Man changed that. Actually, the earliest writings of that is probably one of the most apostate writers in the history of the church is St. Augustine. You know, I know the Catholics will, will, will love St. Augustine, but if you peel back the onion on St. Augustine, he brought so many blasphemies inside the church, and that was between 354 and 430. So again, it was after August or after Constantine who brought in the Roman government. The Roman government started to change the church. Again, Jesus talking about the parable of the mustard seed. Satan says, giddy up. I got a way inside the church now. Here we go. All right, so let's, let's know truth. So we've put the, the non-truth behind us. Um, so you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make the carved images. That's the key there. Verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. You don't bow down to them. We've got pictures of popes um, that are bowing down to Mary bowing down to a statue of Mary. We have people that go to festivals and bow down to Mary. That's, God says, no. Does she fit into that category above the earth, in heaven, on the earth, or below the earth? Yes. Mary's a wonderful woman, and she's going to be considered a great saint in heaven. But she's not a deity. There's only one deity, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus Christ that died on that cross for us. It wasn't Jesus Christ plus Mary. We got to know the word of the Lord. Here it is. He's telling us the word. 
honor the word of the Lord. We are called to be obedient. You can't love the Lord your heart with all your heart, your soul, and your mind and be disobedient. He wants you to love him, but he wants you to be obedient to him. And the only way to be obedient to him is no truth. Get in his word, the word of truth, not this falseness, not these false idols. And ask yourself, why did they change the commandments? If you're going to change the Ten Commandments, what else are you changing? The more you peel back, you're going to see it's man's tradition. You shall not bow down before them, for I, Jehovah, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the Father. Here's another uh, a verse of the Bible that I, I get brought up a lot to me. A lot of it is because of de denomination teaching. Why do we, why are we, let's see, that's not fair. God's saying that there's a curse on, uh, on, on my, my d d uh, gene pool uh, for the third and the fourth generation. That's not fair. Why, why would God punish the innocent? That's not what the Lord is saying. If you see, that's why you have to know the scripture, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, all of it together to know what he's talking about. He's telling us that we were born into a sin nature and we carry the DNA of our fathers, of our forefathers. That DNA is sin nature bringing into the world and we carry that generation of that curse for the three to four generation. But any time that we call and seek the Lord with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, we can give Him our heart and that generation curse is gone. You can pray it off through the love of Jesus Christ. That is not a permanent thing. It's through the love of Christ that can take that curse off. Never in the scripture does it say that will be there permanently. That's false teaching from within inside a denomination. Know the truth. Jesus Christ will always set your sins free. No matter what your family's past is, no matter what your past is, God, through Jesus Christ, is the God of redemption and love. If you seek his face with all your heart, your heart, your soul, and your mind, he will redeem you no matter what the DNA or the sin is. We all have a DNA curse from our forefathers, whether it's cancer, whether it's alcohol, whether it's you know, whatever it may be, sexual addiction, whatever it is. We all have fallen short, and there's a curse on each and every one of us from, from Satan through the Adam and Eve in, in the Garden of Eden, but we have a get out of jail, get our heart into love with Christ card here, a book that sets us free, and it's through the love of Jesus that we can get that out. Pray to that, pray to him. Uh, so I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity. So that's one of the things that people always come to me and say, hey, why would God do that? That's not what God says. We all have curse. You can pray the curse off and accept him and be redeemed. But showing mercy to thousands who love me and keep my commandments. Oh, wait a minute. See, the next, the next one, next verse is he saying, but I'm showing, but I show mercy. How does he show mercy? By confessing our sins. That's why he went with animal sacrifices, because he had to have something to sacrifice the blood, the shed of blood that wasn't innocent anymore because it was contaminated with sin. That's why it was so precious that the sin of the animals couldn't make it, that it had to be his beloved son to take it to the cross once and for all. That's how much he loved us, showing mercy to thousands. Who are the thousands? There's millions born. The thousands who sought their sought sought him with all their heart, their soul, and their mind with love. It's all about love, redemption. And those who love me, love me. It's all about love. It's not about memorizing a catechism or memorizing this or doing 50 Hail Marys and 75 backflips or singing in the choir. No, it's a love redemption. It's a love relationship. If you don't have the spirit of the living Christ in your church that you're going to, which is only a building, you're the church, then find one that has the spirit of God. People always ask me that. Well, we're not supposed to leave the church. Well, you are the church. If Jesus Christ is born again, you're born again, Christ is you. You are the church. So wherever you go, whatever building you go into, you're the church. So if you walk into a Kroger and you're going to get yourself some, uh, some uh, Kogel uh, hot dogs, you are the church. Show the glory of the Lord in Kogel, through Kogel and through Kroger. You are the church and make the glory of the Lord shine everywhere. And it says, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. But yet, denominations changing the Ten Commandments. How can they do that? He says, just obey me. Because my ways are higher than your ways. I know the end from the beginning. Why are you going to trust some man who thinks he knows it all? Who changed it for his own political reason? Do you trust anybody? America's starting to wake up. 
They don't trust the right. They don't trust the left. They don't trust Congress. They don't trust the president. They don't, look, they don't trust the media. They don't trust sports heroes. They don't trust anything anymore because the world is fake. Satan has created this, this mountain of fakeness. Find the truth. The only truth that will set you free in this world. God is shaking the pillars of the universe. As we speak, here's a shaking going on. And the shaking is to know his word, called by his name. And this is the only way to know him. And let that glory shine all over the world because he never lies. He says, keep my commandments, keep my word. Do not add to or take to or change these words because they are for you my son or daughter, to sustain you. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Who is? Jesus Christ, the living word. Know him. Be obedient to him. You shall not take the name Jehovah your Elohim in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. <coughs> Excuse me. That happens to be the uh, number two that the Catholics and the Lutherans changed to take their name in vain. And uh, that's strike on, I'm not saying all of them, but a good majority of them who changed it did it for vanity. A lot of people say, well, this is a swear word. Yeah, the swear word of calling a cuss word of God is just horrendous. And I, I watch a TV show and all TV shows or movie or um, shows that you see on TV. When somebody gets upset, they have to say the, the word Jesus Christ always. And, and it's derogatory and it's just, it's horrid. I mean, that's the first thing coming out of their mouth because that Satan has filled them with evil, filled them with contempt. They can get that evil and that contempt away through the love of Christ. But it's not a vocabulary word. Vanity means how we puff ourselves up. Ego in the, in the, in the uh, Greek means ego, me, I, I, all about me selfies all things are idols for self people are looking for self gratification he's talking about an ambassadorship of jesus christ if you're called to be an ambassador of jesus christ that means you have been accepted as jesus you accept jesus christ as the lord of your life and he's in your heart you have just been anointed an ambassador for him so he's saying when you become an ambassador for me do not take my name in vain don't do it for political reasons. Don't do it for money reasons. Don't do it for pride. Don't do it for any other reason except for love. What did he say just before that? For those who love me and keep my commandments. Don't use my glory for vanity. That's what he's saying. And look what man has done. They used it for vanity. They used it to placate. They did it for power. They did it for greed. They've done it for money. No, 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 no. The curtain's being pulled back. And we're seeing truth. The light is shining on darkness. It's always about a love relationship and your ambassadorship of the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about, being vain. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. The Sabbath is a Saturday. It's always been a Saturday. will always be a Saturday. For those who think that the church has replaced Israel and we'll be worshiping on a Sunday when we get to heaven, eh, that ain't going to happen. God is always keeps His truth. The seventh day of the week in the Hebrew calendar is uh, Saturday. They don't call it Saturday. They call it the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. Shabbat. And now we will be celebrating Shabbat and the millennial reign, as you can see in the, 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 the prophet Ezekiel 40 through 48. Six days you shall work and do all work. Verse 10. But on the seventh day, that's what the Lord called it. And he, and he didn't call it a Saturday. Saturn, Saturday is after the name Saturn. Remember, in all this pollution of changing the names of this, they, use, they worship other gods. So Sunday was the sun god. Saturday was Saturn, the su Saturn god. So that's where we get all the names in the United States for the days of the week and not the, 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 the true in the beginning. God would call it by the first day, the second day, the third day, the seventh day. Seventh is completion. The completion of one's work is to arrest so that we can meditate on the Lord and seek his face with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Sabbath, the Lord uh, your God, you shall do no work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is in your gate. Take the time for your family to meditate on me. He knows our bodies will wear down. We need, as Jesus said, the Sabbath was not created for God, but for man. I am the, I am the, I, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Because he knows we need rest. He knows we need, we need spiritual nourishment. We need the bread of life. We need the living water. So on our Shabbat, that's the time we seek his face with all our heart, our soul, and our mind and bring our family together. 
and, and give them a Bible study and learn together the Word of God and create His glory in your household. I had a family member come to me just recently <clears throat> about getting back in the church. I said, you don't have to go to church to do that. Yeah, it's great to have a church. Good to have fellowship. But some of the strongest growing of God's Word are in small Bible studies. And you don't have to wait on anybody else. You be the spiritual head of your family. Take your family and say, we're going to learn the Bible together today. Let's learn the scripture today. Today is the day that we set apart in this household every day of the week that we're going to get together as a family to learn the word of God. God called on every one of the males of his household to do that, to be the spiritual leader. And I'm calling on every man out there that has a family. Step up today and be the spiritual leader of your family. Start a Bible study. Start in John. You need some help, go to www.glory.tv. We have the entire John series right there for you. Start teaching your family the Word of God and honoring Him with a Sabbath for Him. Honor your father and mother that your may, you, the days may be long in the land which your Lord, your God, has given you. The only, the, the only commandment, <coughs> as the Scripture says, that comes with a, a promise. Honor thy father and mother, so it will go well with you. We, we, we have to honor them. We have to respect them. We have to, uh, if there's abuse going on in the relationship of your father and mother, you're to forgive them, but you're going to hold yourself at, at a distance from them and pray for them. God is not saying honor your father and mother no matter what they do, if they're in sin nature and they're, they're, they're abusing you, they're hurting you, whether it be physically or mentally. That's not what he's saying. He says honor them and, and, and forgive. As Christ says, forgive your, forgive your brother uh, as if you don't forgive, I can't forgive. So it's important to forgive and honor your father and mother. But if you're in an abusive relationship and they're walking in a, in a different way, the scripture tells us, love them, but keep them at a distance and pray for them so that it doesn't harm you. But we're always supposed to forgive and respect. That's what he's saying. You, you shall not murder. We know, do not murder. Even if you have murdered in your life, there is forgiveness. God is a loving God. So if you're a murderer, no matter what you've done, and you think, you know what, God doesn't love me. I've done too many bad things in my life. I'm a murderer. I'm a sexual immoral. I've committed adultery. I've robbed banks. I've whatever it is. God is a God of love. He will give you complete, complete new heart. Seek his face through his son, Jesus Christ, and you can be restored. The prisoner that was put on the cross to the right of Christ, he's in paradise today. We'll see him when we go to heaven. And he was a bad Oreo. You don't get to the cross being uh, just a, a regular thief. You're a murderer and a robber. You're the worst of the worst to get on a cross like that in the old Roman Empire. So he was given forgiveness because he accepted the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as Lord of his life before his death. So there's never, too, there's, there's never loss of hope. When you still are still breathing, there's time to repent to the living God. And look at some of the patriarchs throughout the scripture that murdered they didn't, and God forgave them. David, David, Moses. <laughs> and how did they finish? They finished well because they asked for repentance and sought the face of the Lord with all their heart, their soul, and their mind. There's forgiveness. No matter what you've done, there's forgiveness. But you've got to repent and then be obedient. Remember Jesus said to the woman of the adulterer that was caught in the act, he said, your, your sins are forgiven, but sin no more. That's the key. Your sins are forgiven, but don't do it anymore. Honor me. Be, honor my commandments. You have to be obedient to what I say, not what man says, not what you think you want to do is within the Bible. Oh, I like this one, but I don't like that one. No, he says, all my commandments, all of them. I, I read them. I wrote them. I put them there. They're from the beginning of time. <clears throat> How do we know that? Because John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word. That means before the earth was even made, the Word of God was. And the word, of God was, the word of God was next to God, and the Word of God was God. So this is Jesus Christ and God in itself and before the beginning of the earth and every single thing. And the, re, the original, the original Hebrew text and the original Greek text is infallible. Because I always hear people say, well, that's not the infallible because man translated it and this translation is wrong. Yeah, the translations are not 100% right. But the original Greek and the original Hebrew, which you can get, but uh, at free, you can go to the uh, Blue Letter Bible and you can take the entire Bible and go verse by verse what the original Greek or what the original Hebrew word means, how to pronounce it, where it's used in other places in the Bible so that you know what the true word was. And God's word is always truth. Praise his name. You should not commit adultery. 
uh, the, the, the love relationship between a man and female is, is, is holy in the eyes of the Lord. And that the, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus Christ are the center of your relationship. That is the key. And it's to procreate. That's the purpose of that. That's why Jesus said when we go to heaven, we will never be married anymore because there's no purpose to be procreating anymore because we're outside of time and space. And we are, we are married. We are the church. We are the bride married to the groom forever. Praise his name. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So th that one, um, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You're not to lie, not to, for, for anything else. Verse 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, his donkey, nor anything, <coughs> excuse me, that is your neighbor's. Shall not covet. Paul says, Thank you for the law, because I wouldn't have known what covenant meant if it wasn't for the law. Law tells us what our stretch goals are. This is what God expects, and we can't get there on our own because we're, we're, we're fallen. And Jesus takes it to an even a higher level in the Beatitudes. Even if you think it in your mind, you have committed it. And we've all thought it in our mind, and we've all sinned short of the glory of the Lord. And we needed a Savior, that Savior is Christ the Lord, and we can get restoration through our heart and his heart forever, but we need to be obedient. So no covetedness. And that's one of the commandments, not to combine them for political reasons as the Catholics and the Lutherans have in their Ten Commandments. Blasphemy. Now all witness the, okay, so you shall not cover your neighbor's house. So now he, Moses is given the Ten Commandments from the Most High God to the children of Israel. And it's shaking. And they're like, oh my goodness, as we mentioned in uh, Exodus 19. They're going to go, no, 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 we don't want to hear from a God. He's too powerful. Moses, you tell us, you tell us. That's what started the, the, the going through a man. You don't go through a man, you go right through God. Jesus Christ died for one, he died for all. You can go directly to him. God wanted to talk to the people directly. But it was the people that said, no, 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 we want to go through Moses. That's what the people are saying today. No, 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 no. We want to go to our father, our pastor, our priest, our minister, or whoever he is, Mary or whoever. No, you don't go through anybody. The Bible says you go directly to me, the living word. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Nobody else can give you the bread or the living water unless you go up and get it yourself. Got to get it yourself, and he's going to give it to you. Your life changes is when you get in the word of God. Why do you think Satan does not want you to read the word of the Lord? Because it changes you. It changes you. And he doesn't want you changed. Why? Because if you're changed and you know the word of God, you became a threat. Right now, Satan's happy and delighted. He's got all these denominations with all these fake traditions and 90% and of the church, so-called church, not even reading his word. He's sitting back saying, that mustard seed and those birds are working out pretty darn well for me right now. But God's saying, no, 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 Satan. I got something for you. It's called the light of Christ. I'm going to shine the light on the darkness. The light's coming and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is coming upon all man for his spirit and his glory to reach the nations through his word. Pick up his word and trust him. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the flashing of light, the sound of the shofar, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. They said to Moses, you speak with us. And we will hear you, but not let Elohim with us, lest we die. Oh, I don't want to speak to Elohim. We'll die. He's too scary. He's too thunderous. He's too powerful. But he's God of love. He wants you. Don't say, no, 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 no. I don't want somebody else to do it. Nobody else can do it for you. Learn from this. The children of Israel had the opportunity to speak to God. He wanted to speak to them directly. And God has given you that chance today through his son, Jesus Christ. Pick up your heart. People ask me all the time, how do I pray? How do I know Jesus is not a prophet? How do I know Jesus is not just a, a, a good man? How do I know Jesus is the Son of God and God? And it's simple. Ask him. Ask him. Pray to him. Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me in these end days. Show me who you are. Are you a prophet? Are you a good man? Or are you the risen Christ? Are you the Son of God and God in the second head? Show me, Lord, today. Show me. Show me. Give me a sign of who you are. And he will. He wants everyone to have a love relationship with him. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for Elohim has come to test you, that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Came to test you. How are you going to handle it? Are you going to run away and say, I want somebody else to interpret it? Or are you going to say, Your, your word is truth, Lord. Your, you are love, and I seek you. They ran. 
And they said, don't let Moses do it. So the people stood off far, and Moses drew near the thickness of the darkness where Elohim was, the darkness of his Shekinah glory, the darkness of his kavod, his literal glory, his literal essence. Then Elohim said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, You've seen that I've talked with you from heaven. You are a witness that I talk, that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God that delivered you from Egypt. You have heard my voice, you have seen my commandments, and now you want to go through man. You shall not make anything to me... Uh, uh, to be with me. Gods of silver or gods of gold you shall not make for yourself. He's a jealous God. Do make material things of the earth. Those things will wear out, but the word of the Lord will be the only thing. The riches in, your, in, in, in love in Christ Jesus are the only things that you can take with you. An altar of the earth you shall, you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it burnt offerings and your peace offerings. Your sheep, your oxen, and every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. I will come to you and bless you if you are doing it with a contrite heart, being obedient to me and doing it for my purpose and my glory and not doing it for material things and not doing it for vanity, not doing it for self, not doing it for tradition, not doing it for denomination. Doing it because I'm telling you I love you and I have a commandment for it to go well with you. And that sacrifice that you're making of an earthly sacrifice of, of, of an animal, is you should have been in that place instead of that animal because of the sin nature. But because I'm a loving God, I gave you a way out. But even better yet, I gave my only son to reconcile you to me forever through my son, Jesus Christ. Praise his name. That's how much love it is. That Jesus Christ died for our sins, past, present, and future. And that the living God here in Exodus, Elohim, the God of three, gave up himself. Because Paul tells us Jesus Christ is the visible of the invisible God. God the Father gave himself up. He gave himself up for us because we couldn't even handle the simple sacrifices because it was too much. All he's saying is, you can't do it on your own. Trust me. Give me your heart. Trust me. I'll give you the way, the truth, and the life. If you make an altar of stone, you should not build on, an on hue stone. Stone, whether the stone, it's the stone that the, the builders rejected, which became the chief cornerstone which is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. For if you use your tool on it, you have profaned it. No tool, no carving, no changing. I am, the, I, I am going to give you the cornerstone, my beloved son and me. Now, nor shall you go up the steps to my altar that your nakedness may be exposed to on it. Don't go up to the steps of the holy God because I am who is holy. We pray that Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, on this 500th year of the Reformation, that man has gotten it horribly wrong. However, God is great. God is a God of love. God wants you to know truth today, and the truth will set you free. But in the truth, in this world of fake, 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 everybody's looking for truth today because he's exposing everything. There's nowhere to hide right now to find truth except for one thing that was from the beginning of the earth. John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word of God. This is the only truth. Satan doesn't want you to pick up this book because it's a life changer. It's an internal life changer. Pick up the word of God. Know him. Start with John 1.1 1, 1 today. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you and your families till next time. God bless you.